All right, well, even though there's nobody here, I am recording this, so I will explain what I'm doing. So we're gonna make a zipper pouch with an inside lining. Now there's a lot of tutorials on this on YouTube, so this is nothing new. Um, you pretty much do any search and you'd find how to do something like this. But I thought for my first stream, which I was a little nervous to do, um, this would be something real simple for me to not have to think too hard about. And if there were actually people here, I wouldn't be so nervous. So <laughs> it's okay though. So what we've got is our uh, outer lining, which is Mario. Our inner lining, which is brick, which is Mario themed. And then I've got the zipper. So we layered it with the inner lining with right side up. We put the zipper face up at the top. And then we put the outer lining face down into basically a sandwich. Now I'm going to use, I'm just going to use black thread. Um, since there's black in it and it'll, it's pretty universal, it'll fit just fine. And I got to get my, oh, I got to get the zipper foot on the sewing machine. And we will sew along the zipper. So, let me go grab that since I forgot it. All right, so we'll take our zipper foot, which is this dude right here. And we'll put that on the sewing machine. There's three of us, hey! Suave's Chica, that must be my wife. <laughs> Hi, Mandy. The only other person is... Both people are actually me. You're the only one here, but that's okay. I'm recording it. And I didn't really, uh... Uh, what do you call it? Tell people about it, per se? I kind of only posted one thing on Facebook, so... It's fine. This is a good start. Is it coming across okay for you? Can you see everything all right in here? Sounds good. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. So, since I'm recording this, I should probably move my pop, give some instructions. So, I'm going to sew with the zipper foot. Since the, this isn't the zipper foot, but let's pretend basically half of this isn't here. I'm going to line up the foot just like that. And the zipper is essentially right under here. You can kind of feel it. So I'm going to go right along the edge and go all the way down so I can get as close as I can to the actual zipper teeth. <clears throat> and do this first part. Oh, I should also mention, so the pattern I use for this is just a simple, this is poster board from Dollar Tree. I just measured it out in my grid here. Um, it is, let's see, this is what? One, two, three, four, five, six by six by eight. 
That's how long the zippers are that I purchased. I purchased my zippers on Amazon. I just got a bag of them for like eight bucks. Uh, six, in six inch zippers. But you could make any bag size you want this way. You just want to make sure that your zippers are going to match the same length as your pattern. So. Alright, so put that down. Do the forward stitch, back stitch, and go. Oh, shoot, I forgot. I gotta shorten my stitch length. I had it longer for another project I was doing. So, I have to make some t-shirts, because none of my t-shirts fit. They're all too short, lengthwise. Uh, they keep shrinking. I have nice t-shirts, <laughs> and they all end up too short. So at some point, um, maybe in actual very near future, I will probably start to do that and I don't know if I'll stream it or do a YouTube video on it or both I guess we'll see uh, eventually I don't really want to re record these live streams per se because I kind of want to get people here and it kind of defeats the purpose if people can uh, essentially just go watch it on YouTube and not actually come but, since I'm just starting out, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I also have to see about whether or not I can stream both at the same time. Facebook and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So you can see here, there's the zipper part right now. So we opened it up, and we've got that, like that. So now, we have to do the other side of the zipper and get that on there. So we're essentially going to do the same thing. We're going to lay this down. i got to think about this. I always get confused on this part. So let me see. Let me make sure this is right. If I do this. Yes, because then if we sew the outside fabric on, then when we open it up, it'll be like that. And that's what we want. And we want the inside fabric to be on the inside, so this is correct. Okay, so we'll pin this together. I'm gonna swig my pop. And watch out, my iron's over here. Don't want to melt my pop. Um, now, I'll iron these seams out here in just a second. I'm not really going to worry about it right now. Just at least until I get these both on. And then I'll iron the seams and smooth it out. You probably noticed earlier I was cutting the zipper a little bit. Um, cut, so cut that side so I want this side to be flush. Um, I did that because the zipper was just like a few millimeters too long. So I cut it just so that it fit the length of my fabric pieces. So we'll keep Line it up. I should be able to get this done by midnight. It's Wednesday night. Everybody that I know of anyway has to work or go to school the next day. It's hard to start streams earlier because um, I myself have other obligations, family obligations, so 
I don't always get to start earlier, which is okay. For now, that's just how it's going to have to be. So we'll keep doing this. This makes me a little nervous. This has to get up higher. There. There. There we go. Alright. So we'll keep going. Pinning is very tedious work sometimes. But necessary. The other thing I've seen people do is use like chip clips to put their fabric pieces together. And to be honest, for something like this, I don't think that would be a bad idea. It might actually go a little easier. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing that for garments. I would actually do pin placements for garments because um, you're going to get a better hold. So. That's my two cents on it anyway. Oh, oh no, that's right, okay. All right. So now we gotta sew this on the foot. Oh, you can't really see my uh, sewing machine when I do this the way I have the camera placed. Well, just know that uh, I'm lining up the foot just like I did before. And maybe in the future I'll have to consider changing my camera angles. Alright, so we're doing forward stitch, back stitch. not sewing our pins in place because we don't want to break a needle. I did that. Never thought it was possible to break a sewing needle on a pin. Everyone talked about it. I'm like, no! And then it happened. I was like, hey! Oh crap! Look at that. You can break sewing needles on pins. Alright. This. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if I did it right or I totally screwed it up. Got my wing dips. Boop. I have another stream Friday for this week. It's the only one I scheduled. But I could do more sewing, or maybe I'll paint minis. I don't know. I'm definitely not a pro painter at minis, but I do enjoy it. Uh, oh, someone else is here. I can zoom in on iPhone. Well, the iPhone actually is using, I'm using that to film me on the webcam. Should I zoom in on it? <laughs> Get more of my ugly mug. Yeah, midnight. Well, that's when I said I would go to. You don't have to stay up. You're tired. I know you can go to. You can go to bed. All right, um, I did it right, yay. We're gonna press these bad boys down. All right. Oh, for pressing seams. Oh, let's just keep this out. So 
this is my cool little ironing board I got a little bit ago, actually like last year. And it's nice for little projects like this. It's actually, I think that's it again, I got it on Amazon. And I believe it's advertised for dolls. Um, selling doll clothes. You could also, it's also really good for sleeves. But. So I will say, be careful when you're doing this, depending on your zipper. Um, some zippers are nylon, which like this one is. And if you hold too long, you're gonna melt your teeth and your zipper won't work and you'll be sad. Sad. Sad pain. So, I know everyone always says, press your seams, you'll get a more professional look. Oh, well, they're not kidding. It actually works. Um, and it's something you should do. So, I'm going to agree with every other person out there that sews. Um, I can remember I made a coat. The very first thing I ever made, clothing wise, was a little coat for my daughter. And back then it looked amazing to me. <laughs> it was made out of fleece. Um, we still have it, they still use it, but it does not look very good now that I've done a lot more stuff. And if I had the choice to ever redo it, I probably would. Well, I shouldn't say if I had the choice to redo it, because I do have a choice to redo it. But if I ever did redo it and make it again, it would look a lot better. One, because I would press my seams. Two, because I have a serger now, and I can serge clothes. If surging is even a word or a verb, whatever. Okay, the other thing is this is fleece too, and it's Mario stuff. I gotta be careful how long I press the iron on it, or it's gonna get totally screwed up. Okay, that's good. Alright. So now we gotta put this together. Last we're gonna do a hoop. What time is it? I think we'll do a hoop since there's time. Alright, so I have this fashion swivel hook. Let's take this thing out. Ouch. Alright. So what this is going to look like, so once this is all together, your pouch is going to be all sewed up and neat and nifty, this thing will be on the side, probably do it on this side, um, and it will be hanging out, we'll have this fabric folded together, it will be coming out. It'll loop through this, and then you'll have this hook, and you can put your keys on it or other things. I use it for my keys. Uh, I've got my keys in a carabiner. I should actually show you the one that I have now. Uh, 
so someone's texting me. Alright, so let's do that piece. Let's do this. So I cut this down just to two inches, and it's let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's eight inches long, which is probably way more than it needs to be. Um, in fact, maybe I'll trim that. Yeah. It probably only needs to be like four inches? Well, six, because then it'll be three inches long. And we want to have it tucked in pretty good too. So, yeah, let's go six inches. Alright. So I'm going to use my grid. Put it on there. Grab my ruler. Bada bing, bada boom. Alright. Now, I need my other foot. Normally, when you do a tube thing like this to hold something, um, since this is just a zipper pouch, I'm not going to worry too much about, like normally you'd probably want to fold it, like so, and then like fold it in half and then half, so that when you actually stitch it, it looks kind of like both sides at both ends are sort of uh, rounded. You don't have raw edges like this coming together like I'm about to do it. I'm kind of doing it the lazy man's way. So if you wanted a more professional or more uh, clean look, that's what you would do. But I'm not going to worry about it because um, I will... Well, do I want to worry about it? Yeah, that's going to look pretty stupid. Alright, I will fold it. So, that's why I got this out. So, let's do this. Alright, so I'm going to fold it about what I think is a quarter of an inch. And press it. Um, pressing it just makes it easier to pin and sew later so that that just stays down otherwise it would keep flapping up and be stupid and you know what that should move this so you can see it better move my sewing machine Whoa. So I guess ideally uh, this was two inches. You probably want to make it like two and a half or even three inches so that you can fold half an inch in and half an inch, like this would be half inch, this would be half inch to make a whole inch. And then you would have a two inch long piece. But again, I'm not gonna worry about it because one, I already have one of these pouches. <laughs> um, and I guess, I don't know, it'll look fine. You'll see. 
I should probably always do things the right way because it's my work and I should take pride in it, but and I do take pride in it, don't get me wrong, but I also don't get all super crazy anal about stuff unless I have to. Okay, so now we'll take this and we will bring it over edge to edge. The only thing that I'm not going to like about this is that there's going to be quite a bit of wiggle room in that, but it'll be strong, especially because we're doubling up on the fabric. We're folding it together, um, bringing it together. So this will be good. All right, I'm use smaller pins for this. And this would actually be a really good instance if I had them to use some chip clips since it's kind of thin. I'm not gonna pin it all the way down. Just need to pin it enough to hold it in place. And then I'll use my fingers to guide it the rest of the way. Oh, that's a little off. There. Cool beans, dude. All right, we're not gonna worry about the ends. We're just gonna sew this way, and then we're gonna do another top stitch on the other side so it doesn't look stupid, ironically. So. Other thing is, is I'm not really going to back stitch on this because the this end is going to end up folding to meet the other end, and it's going to be inside the zipper in the seam line. Um, so it's going to get stitched across inside the bag. So I don't need to worry about really back stitching and really securing because it's going to have another stitch across it. I mean, you could back stitch if you want, but I don't think it's a big deal. And we want small stitches, uh, small stitch length, short stitch length, whatever. No, it's not grabbing. Urgh. Go, go, go. There we go. Oh, that's going to look dorky. But that's okay, though. It's going to be tucked inside. So no big deal. One thing I have not quite figured out, and there's not a lot of fabric. There's teeth on the sewing machine underneath the foot, and it's the teeth that grab. And when there's not enough fabric to really grab the fabric to keep pulling it through, as the needle lifts up, the teeth and everything kind of grab and pull. There's not always enough fabric to really get a good hold, and you get this really stupid you can kind of see here this knotted mess right there it's really annoying when you're trying to do certain things like this and then you get this kind of weird stuff Ugh, all these extra bizarre pieces of thread mostly that happens because the needle keeps going up and down up and down in the same spot so I'd always recommend after you threw uh, sew a stitch to always cut your threads off because you don't ever really want those to get stuck in the machine um, otherwise you have to be really mindful of what you're doing so that you for sure don't get the thread stuck in the needle as it's going down and otherwise you're gonna get a knot it's gonna be a real pain in the butt. Uh oh, 
No! Oh. I forgot to grab it. So, you can't really see. I'm zooming, or uh, trying to rethread the needle. My thread came off. Okay, there we go. We're good to go. Ciao. Alright. Let's do this. Do it. I was able to use my fingers to push it enough that the thread or the fabric was able to grab. Alright, super important step. Don't be you'll be sad if you forget. You gotta put this through. Now to make your life easier, I definitely recommend doing a couple stitches, just a few, to hold that in place. So that when you're putting it in the bag, it's not such a pain in the butt to keep it down. The problem is if you do too many stitches, you're gonna add bulk and it becomes a real pain in the career. So I would do long stitches here in just a few. Oops, how about I put my foot down? There. Just enough to hold it in place. see how ugly that looks but and there's my iron again it's okay because it's not going to be seen and you can kind of see I didn't exactly do a great job with my top stitch it's a little off Especially here, you can kind of see I went over. Um, that was because it got stuck, and I was trying to compensate afterwards. But, oh well. All right, pouch time. So we want to make sure we keep the zipper open for this, because you're going to have to reach into the zipper to pull this through, and we're going to do this. Alright, no wait, I gotta think about this. We're gonna do this. Right, okay. That's where I always get confused as well. Yeah, we need to make it flat all right sides together. And the inside we're gonna leave a gap about this size. Um, so we'll sew all the way around here, and then we need to remember this. So, this also gets tricky, because now I need to remember how I did this part before, too. So let's this together, and let me think about this. So 
will be all zipped up. So we're going to want to place this here because this is going to be the outside. And we need it to be in like this. I remember last time I did this, I screwed it up real bad. <laughs> so you can put it anywhere, it doesn't matter. Um, I wouldn't put it like too close to the bottom, somewhere maybe around there. And then fold it over. And the reason we want to put it in is because eventually this is going to be the outside, right? And you want this to be, oh no, that's not right. Nope, 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 nope. Oh man. I gotta remember how I did this. I know I messed it up. Let me go get mine. Look. to redo the inside of this here, but all that demonstration puzzles. All right, this is the stage we're at now. sewed it in where it's on the inside right there okay I was right you can see maybe you can see it I don't know anyway there's green in between these seams okay so if we mimic that this it's gonna go here we'll put it right in that line and then that's gonna go over and then we'll pin it now I'm gonna pin here at the corners because you can see how it doesn't line up it's because the zipper um, so if you give it a little pull everything should be fine I need to remember I gotta cut some bulk out of the seam here too. Okay. And then I want to make sure that I don't I gotta leave an oh no, here I need to close this all up. So well let me actually do this first so I don't forget. Oh wow, that's off. Okay, well, we'll have to fix that. Not a big deal. 
we can fix it. Alright, so I'm getting where that loop is. Putting that in place. I'm going to put a couple pins in the corners and the sides to hold it initially, and then I'll finish pinning it. And then we got to take care of some of this uh, goofiness that we got going on with stuff not lining up. And that happens. It's just part of sewing. Um, sometimes you can stretch your fabric and make it work, but you got to be careful when you do that because if you stretch it too much and then you sew it tight down, you're going to get sometimes you get really weird wrinkles. And for a bag that's going to be loose, it's probably not a big deal. And that's actually, I'm not pulling it too tight, it's actually not that bad right here. Uh, but in things like clothes, especially places that you have to have ease, like in armholes and stuff, you don't want that to happen. You've got to be careful with arms and waists and anything of a hole, anything round. Of course, the body is all manner of shapes. Pucker, that's the word I'm looking for. No puckering. Maybe I can fix this. Can I? Or is it really screwed up? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so see. If I slide down, and see how it puckers? That means it's not pinned right. I actually could pull the fabric and meet the ends. So I don't have anything really screwed up. It's fine. I just need to pull the fabric and now it'll line up perfect. I like to keep all my pins on the same side too by the way. So I mean, what do I mean? Um, see how the head pins are all on this side whereas if I'm on that side you can see where the pin goes through. I do that because when I'm sewing, I just like to be able to take the pins out versus having to reach under and grab it and do it. All right, keep this in place so it doesn't move. Do a few more pins. Especially up here by the zipper. Now this end is going to be a little easier. Line this up. All right, now that's going to be a. Uh, nope, we're good to go. Okay, smooth it out. Everything looks good. how relaxing this is. I mean sewing's always relaxing, but I mean sitting here listening to the background music, talking to myself. <laughs> Alright, remember we gotta leave about a fist size hole. Why fist? Because you have to kind of reach in there with your hand and grab. And if it's too tight and too small, you'll be using your fingers. <laughs> Don't do that. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. Okay, 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 okay.
I know, pinning is so boring. It's so necessary. Is that in the way? Yeah, kind of. All right. All right, so now we're in trouble here. Why? Well, I pinned here in the edges, and then you can see I've got puckering. And since this isn't a shirt or anything important, I can worry about our ways to deal with that. And it always comes up in things like armholes. Uh, because there's ease, you have to deal with smoothing out that puckering. And if you don't, you're going to get creases in your final, um, after you sew the seam, that's going to look terrible. So in this case, I'm just dealing with it by taking a pin out, stretching it a little bit, flattening it out, and then putting the pin back. But starting, instead of going pin here, pin here, I just took this one out, pulled it, put the pins in like that. All right, got my place to reach through. I've got my little bracket. Move my keys so you can see those. You know, we can sew all this. Oh, wait, I was gonna cut. So there's not a whole lot of seam allowance here. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Oftentimes, to help reduce bulk. Can do what are not what are called notches, but you gotta be careful. Yeah, this make me nervous. You gotta be careful that you don't cut through where your thread is. So you want to make sure you're not about to cut. And notches may not make a difference here. It may not actually help. Um. The notches are one way to help reduce bulk. The other thing you could do is you could just cut real close to that seam. Maybe I'll just do that. Carefully. Oh, so carefully. Mm. Tell you what, I'll do notches on one side and I'll cut away on the other. And for this project, we'll see which is better. Don't cut that seam. Don't cross the streams. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. How many notches do you do is a good question. A lot of times patterns will tell you. It'll be on the pattern how many notches and where you put them in. But not every notch is meant to be something that you cut out like this. Some notches are to mark important spots where connections are made so you can have two notches and two different pieces of fabric line up to one another um, so that you know especially with things like armholes which I talk about a lot um, or other curved pieces or just pieces in the bodice bodice not quite sure how you say that <clears throat> come together make sure everything is lined up right so that everything fits the way it's supposed to how freaking pin <clears throat> All right, so this side I'm just going to cut by not destroying my seam. I'm a little nervous because there's not a lot of seam allowance.
but normally you don't need to do this um, if you just have two pieces of pretty light fabric like but I've got we got two we have oh no we only have three but the zipper is pretty thick so because of that I'm gonna cut this carefully oh that was close <laughs> Woo, it's a little close all right so we got notches on one side and not notches on the other. All right, throw some of this thread away. loud next to the mic isn't it having my pop and ice swish around sorry all right so we're gonna start here go around and stop at this pin so we have our opening and as far as uh, my seam allowance again where's my where's you go, Mr. Presser foot uh oh I was gonna show you with the presser foot here it is so again this is the presser foot but assume that this is the the full uh, foot. So I'm just going to have it be that I'm going to sew keeping the edge of the foot right there in the edge of the fabric. So my seam allowance is going to be not not great, not much, like maybe a quarter to half an inch almost. Um, I'm not actually going to leave more on the edges than I have to. You can see in my pattern, that's about what I accounted for. So if I put the foot down, if this was a full foot, full presser foot, you would see it's about the length of a presser foot. Um, so, and I, don't, I do that because I don't, if you if you do too much, you're going to really shrink the bag down, which, you know, I mean, it's six inch bag, it's pretty good size, but I don't want to lose too much on the inside. So, I'm doing it that way. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Where's my Alright, I'm gonna put my stitch length back down. My foot. Uh oh. I think my other computer turned off. <laughs> oh well, I don't need it. Just had it on. Okay. Makes me nervous when it does stuff like that, though. Alright, so now... Mm, bummer. This is where you can't see what I'm doing. When it gets to... The edge. Uh, poopy sticks. Alright, maybe I can turn this so you can see it. <laughs> so, sometimes this comes up. Alright, you can see I've reached... Hopefully you can see it. I reach the edge of the corner. You can't see it. I still gotta turn it. Here. I'll kind of tip it up. Alright. So I reached the corner. My needle is down inside. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift and I'm gonna turn it like this. Put my foot down and see where I'm at. I can't, this is hard to do when I'm, there. 
All right, you can see that I'm almost where I want to be. I got to go a little bit more toward the edge and then turn it because I've got a little bit of a gap right there. I'm not quite up flush with the presser foot. So I need to come a little bit more back this way. So that's what you do for corners. You gotta, but the important thing is to make sure your needle is down in the fabric. That way you've got something to actually turn on, like pivot, right? If, if the needle's up, you're gonna move your fabric and then you're gonna be all off on your seam and it's gonna look a little ridiculous. All right, so we'll go one more stitch and see if that's close. Oops, that's close, good enough, okay. Come back down, keep going. Take up my thingies. on the teeth a little bit because I'm on fleece. Fleece has a tendency to stretch as you kind of roll under it. Um, with the teeth coming together and you, you're sewing over it, it has a ten tendency to push the fabric and then that causes your a bundle or a bunch to come when you get to the edge of this of the to the edge of the fabric. So you don't always want to have like like a you want to kind of loosen up a little bit on your strength of your I forget I can't think of all the words right now but anyway the thing the the presser foot you don't want to have too much presser too much pressure where the foot is moving over the fabric you want to have a little bit less pressure with fleece because fleece is very grabby otherwise you're gonna basically push a pile of fleece at the end. Now we're coming up on where the uh, thing is on the inside, the um, key, the latch key thing, the clip. So when you get to something like this, sometimes there's a lot of built up fabric underneath and you don't want to slow down because <laughs> um, if you slow down and kind of stop, kind of like I have, it might happen, you get stuck. It's, it's kind of like um, too much of a bump. So before you get to it like you want to leave just a little bit of space where you can kind of get you know go and get some momentum so you kind of go up and over and you don't stop because if you stop on it you're going to go up and down like this on it and it's going to be it's 
it's going to leave a mess. Um, so we'll see if that happens because I think I stopped too close. But here we go. Oh, I got over it. You can even hear it. It was a little bit of a more solid thump. All right. The same thing is true when you get to these zippers. And you want to make sure that you either open up your seam a little bit. Um, open up the seam allowance or you fold it down one way and then get going and go right over it. Don't be shy, just zoom over it. Alright, so now I'm back into my non fleece. So I'm going to go back to my normal tension on the presser foot. That time. Oh, I'm going to leave this pin so I know where to stop. All right. Whoop. There we go. All right. Okay. Now, moment of truth. Did I do it right? <laughs> Here we go. Alright, now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to do what's called boxing corners. And you have square 90 degree angle corners like this. Um, you can get some really weird looking corner tips if you don't box them. Um, so essentially what you're doing is you're, you're going to cut this way, not cutting the seam. And you're essentially making it so that when you push this corner, you're pushing perpendicular um, into where you cut. And it helps just sort of create more of a, like a poof like this versus something that's going to be bunched in like this in a corner. You get more of a sort of a bendy poof, <laughs> if that makes sense. You'll see. So, well, here, actually you can see it in here. So you can see I box the corners and you, I cut really close to the seam I probably don't want to be that close on some of these um, but that helps with not having it be puffy so what do I mean by that um, I'll show you well let me just do it here you'll see it's not you know it's not rocket science I mean Look, <clears throat> you can see a little bit of a curve. I mean, whatever. It's fine. I mean, you can straighten it out if you want. The important thing is, is just box the corners a little bit. Give it something that when you push on that corner, it has something to push back against. Oh, wow, that got really screwed up there. Look at that. Hmm. That's what I'm talking about fleece. you got to be careful. I don't know if I uh, did have my tension right or whatever. Ooh, that was close. Woo, too close. <laughs> pay attention to what I'm doing. All right, so now a moment of truth. Uh, the other thing is, when you've got a line bag like this, and you want to press your seams, you could do it now, sort of. You gotta open it up, kind of put it over the bag itself, and press them down so maybe I'll do that especially for the outside so I kind of want it to be out make it look better get my handy dandy um, ironing board look at that 11 11 I planned it perfectly Exactly what I was doing. Woo, woo. All right, where are we at? Still only one person in here. Still only me. <laughs> it's late though. People are working. 
got kids. I work from home, so it's fine. I'm used to staying up late. It's kind of my thing, it's kind of what I do. I get up, take my son to school, come home. I work from home, so that helps. You see this okay? Yeah, all right. my fingers. I have yet to be burned from my iron knock on wood. Alright, you know what? I'm not gonna really going to worry about the inside because you're not really going to see it. So I'm going to deal with the outside. Unless someone steals my zipper pouch and looks intently on the inside. This man did not press his seams. Evil. So another pro tip when you're ironing, pressing fleece, do be careful. It will burn. I probably have my iron on too high of a setting. Probably want to use a lower setting. Your iron should tell you, on the like mine on the dial kind of says, synthetic silk, rayon, blends, wool, and cotton. Well, I've got mine all the way up on cotton, which is the hottest it can go. Um, it's never really been a problem for me with fleece, and if I have to, I can always like squirt water. And water actually is pretty helpful. Um, it won't burn the fleece as bad. Kind of have a, a little bit longer to press it down but fleece is very absorbent so your fleece will stay wet <laughs> so just FYI All right, I am going to do with the zippers meat squirt it I don't want that zipper to melt oh I can do this side The other thing is I do have a little steamer option on here too. This iron, I put it on the wedding registry back when I got married back in 2008. And you know, I put it on there just because I, I didn't sew back then. I didn't know anything about sewing. I did it because I was like, well, you know, every every house needs a zip or uh, ironing or an iron board and an iron for your clothes and all that kind of stuff, which is probably true. You probably do need an iron. <laughs> but until I started sewing, we never even used it. I found it in the laundry room when I was doing my sewing projects. I was like, sweet, got an iron. And I still have the same ironing board. Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. Did I screw up? So this is what I mean. You gotta make sure you got like a fist size hole. <laughs> I almost made it too small, but we're good. It's all, it's all good. So I guess you could also just do this. Pucker it through, pucker it through. All right. There it is. It's like giving birth to art. Yay, and I did the thing right. Probably should have put it in further. Oh, that sucks. I didn't think about that. Oh well. You can fix it. Alright, now, let's talk about boxing corners. Here is why. So let's finish getting this out. So you're gonna reach in through the hole that you made. Sometimes my fingers are long enough, my hands are long enough, I can just put my finger in this corner. And then you see how you get that nice like corner to it like that? If 
we hadn't boxed it, it wouldn't be sort of that nice rounded edge. So, there. Um, now, what do we do about this thing? I'll pull my corners out and we'll work on that. All right, this is no big deal. This is easy, easy peasy. Why am I getting the feeling something's wrong over here? Probably because I just need to open the zipper all the way. How about I do that? All right. So now we've got this hole. What do we do about it? Well, you can see it's like lips. Hello, my name's Mr. Inner Pouch Man. Um, wow, that was really stupid. So we'll just fold this together. Like so. And we will press it down and then we'll just do like a little top stitch. You could do a top stitch all the way around if you want, but then you're kind of getting into crazy territory up here. You also could hand sew this. I suck at hand sewing. I've done it a few times. I've had to do it for buttons. I know how to do it, but it is not my favorite thing in the whole world. Um, and any time that I can avoid hand sewing, I avoid hand sewing. I would rather just do a top stitch, especially since this is an inside inside lining and it doesn't really matter, it's not really going to be visible. I'm just going to stitch right across this bottom and not even worry about it. I am going to press it just to make it a little easier to make sure I actually get um, everything lined up right. Alright, and then we'll do a little bit more ironing after this to kind of smooth out some of the, the edges. You can kind of see already I didn't do a great job uh, pressing my seams. And why? Because you can see how it kind of goes, like it's, it sort of buckles inside like this versus kind of being out. So we could go back in, we could reverse everything back and try to take care of that better. Uh oh. I just noticed that has to get fixed. No big deal. Reach in, push it out. I still want to close up that hole before I have everything looking tidy. There we go. There. That's better. Alright, and this thing is a little ridiculous. This is a little long. It's sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Um, I probably, if I had it over, do it over again, I probably should have tucked it a maybe like half an inch to an inch. Uh, like put it in further this way so that I only had a little bit. You can see on the one I've already made. The uh, buckle for this one was a lot better. See, way, <laughs> it's not as long, it's a little thicker, and it actually is, is in there a little bit better. Still, it's sturdy, it works. I've used this zipper pouch for, uh, I don't know, I made this over a year ago, and I put like pens and pencils in here, and my wallets in here, I put, uh, my mini mini paints when I buy miniature paints at the store or something I put them in so and you know I clip my keys to this thing like I said right here voila so you can put change in it or even make another small pouch if you wanted a little change purse you can even put a pocket on the outside of this if you wanted for that that's really easy all you have to do is take a Another piece of fabric, just lay it on here and just sew around three of the four corners. Um, just top stitch it down. Now you wouldn't well you'd want to do something with the raw edges. You'd probably want to fold those in underneath a little bit if since you're, if you're only using one piece of fabric. Um, kind of make a so like let's say this was the fabric, you'd probably want to like fold it this way, fold it this way, and like stitch it and then fold these ends in and stitch it. And that way you'd have everything kind of folded in 
then you wouldn't have the raw edges and then you could just slap that on there and you have a pocket um, thing to keep in mind about pockets is if you do a pocket and you do just fabric it's gonna be real loose um, that's why most pockets have a lining that you can usually I use kind that you can iron on um, of course I'm having a total brain fart and I can't remember what the stuff is called but it firms up the the fabric the whole purpose of it is is it glues on or stitches on to the fabric and it's a stiffer material and it makes it kind of like like you can get stuff that's as stiff as like this like cardboard or you can get stuff that's even just a little bit looser um, even sometimes you can just use extra fleece that you have um, just putting another layer of fleece on something will bulk something up depending on the type of fleece obviously um, but for pockets that's usually what I do in fact you can even show you this is a handbag I made when I keep uh, stuff like my D&D &D and role-playing in um, here's a pocket on the outside and you can see it, it's kind of hopefully you can see it yeah um, it's pretty it's pretty well maybe you can't really tell but it's stiff um, and there's a, a lining fabric and then the outside fabric and in between I have the um, the fusible stuff that you can glue on that toughens this up you compare like how tougher looking this is versus sort of the um, like this this isn't as tough now there is a, another fusible piece in this part here but it's like a fleece type fusible so it's not as rigid and tough as this pocket uh, but yeah it's got a strap holds my role-playing game books sometimes and other things when I go play D&D or Star Wars or whatever. Alright, let's finish this up. I should probably put a pin in to mark where to start, where to end. Oh, I'm just going across the whole bottom. Doesn't matter. Never mind. had people ask me in the past uh, how I keep my lines so straight. Well, as you saw tonight, I don't always. But it's kind of like driving. <laughs> if you can drive and stay on the road, you probably can sew. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, when you're driving, you're looking ahead at the road. You're not looking right down in front of the car, in front of the hood. At least you shouldn't be. You should be looking ahead down the road a little bit. And sewing is kind of like that. Like you kind of pick a spot where your the fabric is going in and it doesn't matter if it's one of these lines. Again, you can't really see this the way my camera is, but it doesn't really matter if it's, um, see if that helps. Yeah. One of these lines that shows you seam allowance on it or even if all you're doing is focusing on some part of the foot um, as long as you've got something kind of lined up and you just focus on keeping that as you're putting the fabric through everything will work out fine now the thing about it that I think freaks people out is they get scared because they want to look at how the well, like as the fabric is coming out the other side they want to look at it and see if it looks okay or they're trying to like see like is it lined up is it you know you're not really focusing right there on the foot and the fabric going through and that's a problem you want to just keep your focus and just trust that when you put the fabric in and you put the needle down that's your line you've got it set up so you just need to focus on that one spot on the footer or on the the base plate as you push the fabric through you want to focus right on that part in front not the back not the sides well maybe the side if you're looking at one of the lines but like let's say this is you know my line I got my fabric touched up to that my needles over here I'm looking right where the needle is going in making sure that I'm not going over the line like this or this 
and I'm looking right in the front as it goes through and I guide it through and that way I get clean straight lines and I don't have to worry about um, is it you know I'm not focusing on the other side of it I'm just looking at what's going in all right that's it this is done so we've got our inside lining our brick and a zipper boop now we can press this down a little bit the other thing you could do if you wanted is you could do a, a top stitch around here but if you do that I would recommend pulling out your lining first so that you don't stitch the lining down into it um, that could be a, like just a decorative stitch the only other thing I'm gonna do to this is actually press around the edges a little bit more of the fleece part I have a water bottle too somewhere I can squirt but this is easy so I'm just gonna press that out oh I already did that side gotta do this That's it. Done. And I got myself a new wallet. Not a new wallet. Ha! Ah, new zipper pouch. I could put my wallet in it. Other things give it to somebody for a gift um, got my fabric at Joanne's fabric um, all of this was from Joanne's even the clip so that's it